This is the ASRock X470 Tai Chi Ultimate. It is a rather high-end M4 motherboard that we're going to be taking a look at with the new Ryzen 27 and 2600X CPUs, so definitely stick around for that. Starting with a tour of the motherboard, you have the M4 socket 1331 in the middle, and otherwise you have four DDR4 RAM DIMM slots and the standard included mounting hardware, including the small clips at the side, and of course the included backplate as well, which is always nice to see. You also have an 8-pin and a 4-pin CPU power connector at the top left and a couple of fan headers at the top right. Just below the CPU socket you have a rather large M.2 heatsink. Now I say rather large because this actually covers the central screw hole that you need to install this motherboard and it actually makes it actually pretty annoying to install. You can almost not get a screw past it unless you have the motherboard slightly off and put the screw in first or if you just remove that. So I'd really like to have seen Adrock actually kind of think about these things as that's a very basic usability kind of issue with the board that uh, if you have a certain type of screw you physically can't install the motherboard without removing a bit of it first so uh, it'd be very nice to see that revised even just cut down slightly on the back side so that the screws can always fit in but otherwise I suppose it is nice that it's included as a 22-100 M.2 slot which again is also nice for larger form factor SSDs but uh, yeah just something to bear in mind. And literally just below that is a reinforced X16 PCIe slot. You do also have a second X16 length reinforced PCIe slot running in X8 and both of these reinforced slots are connected directly to the CPU whereas the rest of the PCIe slots including the X16 length one at the bottom all run through the chipset which is an X4 PCIe connection so that all gets shared. Now you do actually have a second M.2 slot underneath the uh, sort of second uh, X16 slot that goes to the CPU and this M.2 slot again as far as I understand it goes through the chipset so bear that in mind although you can still run NVMe RAID with this and it should have some pretty decent performance as well. One of the nice features that ASRock have clearly been thinking about with this motherboard is actually a couple of headers right next to the CPU sockets. These are an LED header for your Wraith Spire, Wraith uh, Prism coolers or uh, and also a single USB internal header. This actually means that for all of your AIOs like your Corsair H100 and H115i Pro and stuff like that that all have a USB connection that normally requires you to go all the way around the board but ends up looking pretty messy. You actually have a USB header right here that you can connect that up to and cable manage much nicer than if you have to run it all the way around which is definitely nice to see. And speaking of RGB headers you do actually have a second one down at the bottom which is your normal RGB uh, kind of common cathode. You also have a digital RGB header just above that one as well if you want to use the digital sort of programmable LEDs. Down at the bottom right next to your debug LED you have a couple of chrome kind of gold plated uh, power and reset buttons which are always nice to have handy. You also have eight total SATA ports here although a couple of these I believe are running through a third party chipset. You also have a uh, two USB 3.0 front panel headers and the new 3.1 gen 2 front panel header for type C and stuff like that which is definitely nice to see. You also have a pretty nice audio solution here although I would mention that the days of the completely split PCBs with LEDs down the middle do seem to be disappearing as both the Gigabyte board I believe even the ASUS board and this one all have somewhat separated PCBs and there are definitely some lines here that separate certain elements but you don't have that whole split that looks like they've ripped off a full side of the circuit board just for your audio circuitry um, so that was a, an interesting thing and uh, it's kind of funny to see that slightly fading away. In terms of your rear I.O. you have your full 7.1 audio and SPDIF you also have USB Type-C and USB 3.1 Gen 2 and 6 USB 3 ports. You also have an HDMI port if you end up putting an APU in this which I'm not too sure why you would. You also have your Wi-Fi, you also have a PS2 combo port which can be useful especially for a kind of pro overclocking and of course you have your gigabit ethernet which is an Intel controller and you also have a second gigabit ethernet using the Aquantia controller who makes some pretty nice uh, overall kind of networking solutions including some relatively cheap 10 gigabit solutions although sadly this one isn't. So I think that's enough of a tour for the board. Let's take a look at the BIOS. Now this one is kind of a mix between the more standard almost original looking gigabyte BIOSes and the more kind of user friendly ASUS MSI BIOSes and it sits quite nicely in the middle. Now this one has a pretty easy user interface. It has a few settings that are kind of buried a lot. I'll come to those in a second and otherwise there is a little bit of kind of change in things like when you're looking through the, the, the more detailed AMD CBS settings and stuff like that. When you're going through into the custom P states and things like that you have to accept that you could be damaging your chip here and 
that it's not Azrock's fault if you change these settings and fry your CPU. Um, but they seem to change from I agree to I accept to accepted to like there's lots of different uh, kind of words that they use to say I accept or I agree um, in, in the things which is just a little bit funny considering that you would assume it's somewhat copy pasted for the agreements but either way it's still a decent BIOS it's well laid out and a lot of options available. Now when it comes to overclocking on the BIOS I would mention that both of the chips that I have the 27 and the 2600X's both didn't seem to overclock much if at all I was only really able to, to leave them at their boost clocks uh, which went up to 4.3 gigahertz and the, the board handled it perfectly fine. The uh, VRM temperatures were really pretty reasonable in the like 50, 60 degrees area. So um, if you did manage to overclock on the board and get a chip that it can be pushed a little bit further than mine can, I think you'd be pretty happy with how well the board can handle it. So I think that kind of rounds out my experience with it. My thoughts on it are that uh, it's a really nice and pretty interesting looking motherboard if nothing else. The BIOS is pretty well laid down and there's a couple of kind of weird settings and a lot of a few quirks if you like but nothing that would put you off of the motherboard in any way which is is perfectly fine of course you do obviously have a lot of connectivity here you have some decent io and a couple of well actually three networking options available straight out of the box so that's definitely nice to see and otherwise this definitely isn't your you know your flashy kind of multi rgb everywhere kind of motherboard but it does a decent job of having some nice styling to it some nice features and a lot of connectivity so that's definitely nice to see before we jump into the scoring i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below is this a sort of board that you're desperately after you know you're, you're an overclocking champion you want to see this thing in your rig or are you more the sort of flashy rgb or do you just want a more budget offering i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below so moving on to the scoring for me this is going to be a 4.5 for money it's going to be a 5 for performance and a 4.5 for functionality in terms of styling it's going to be a 4.5 and a 4.5 for tech TV score and a gold award it's an impressive motherboard and i do recommend it if you're after you know, a, a nice high-end X470 motherboard, and especially if you want to A, connect a lot of things to it, and B, overclock on it, I think you're gonna be pretty happy with it. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you want to check out the uh, motherboard and you want to see pricing when and where you watch this, take a look at the link in the description down below. You can also check out the Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links if you want to support the channel or if you want to support me directly, there's a Patreon link down there too. You can also check out the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and make sure you hit that bell icon for notifications when new videos go up every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. And of course, you can also check out the other videos over here for you if you fancy. That's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And otherwise, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.